What's up everybody? So we're continuing our Deploy This series where we deploy this Next.js application on multiple deployment platforms. In last week's installation of the series, we deployed this on Vercel. And if you haven't checked that out or seen us creating the first video, which I would recommend seeing too, that shows you how to instantiate a Next.js application with TypeScript and Tailwind, then go ahead and check out the links in the description to uh, take a little peek at those. But for this video, we are going to be deploying this on Heroku instead. So I have already gone and uh, updated this. I took the Heroku object and set the is completed boolean as true. So here we have our local instance reflecting what will be the um, updated view of everything. And here is our updated data. But hey, that's kind of boring. I want to see this on a cloud instance so that you guys can also check it out yourselves too. So I'll hop over to uh, Heroku's dashboard and Heroku is very painless. It's gonna be a pretty simple, straightforward process, very much like Vercel. You can connect everything to your um, version control accounts. So we can link this up to GitHub and have it automatically connect to the repository and have it link it up to a specific branch, typically speaking, your main branch and watch for changes and when any changes are detected you can have it automatically redeploy so it's very very seamless with just a couple clicks worth of setups no crazy configuration files to fill out just very very straightforward um, i do recommend let's see making sure you've got your account security in place because well just like with any other deployment platform, you uh, want to make sure that you have your security in place. And the reason why is you'll have a credit card <laughs> tied to an account that can deploy virtual infrastructure. Somebody could compromise your account and use that for nefarious purposes like, let's say, I don't know, a bunch of crypto mining stuff or maybe they could operate a botnet out of that. And that's stuff that you're like financially liable for so you got to make sure that you have all of your virtual infrastructure uh, locked down with some sort of you know multi-factor authentication same thing goes for version control you also want to make sure that you have that securely uh, locked down as well in addition to any emails um, or communication accounts you just want to make sure that you know you're using good security practices but enough of that little soapbox so with Heroku when you create an application it has to be a name that is globally unique across all of Heroku. So we'll try deploy this and that is actually not available. So this part sucks about Heroku is uh, coming up with some kind of name that uh, serves well for your application. Well, I don't want to end it with um, a hyphen, but I mean, that is technically available. And like deploy this Heroku is kind of redundant because that's the subdomain this application's name will be. And it would be like deploy this heroku.herokuapp.com. I'll call it like P3 or part hyphen three. We'll do that, okay. <laughs> Enough uh, bike shedding about uh, naming for an application. So if you're just wanting to deploy something straightforward like a Next.js application, like I said, there is no complex configuration you have to do. You just have to connect your GitHub account to your Heroku account, which I already have established. You search for your repository name. And there it is, we hit connect. And like I was saying earlier, we can have automated uh, redeployment. I don't have any continuous integration. That's for like another video series way down the line. But uh, you can enable all your CI to pass before having it automatically redeploy, which is really cool. Since I don't have CI though, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just gonna click enable automatic deploys. So every time you push to main, the app redeploys, which is really awesome, hands-free. Uh, you just manage all of your, you know, PRs, and then once you've got a good stable release, you'll have your um, 
cloud application, you know, redeploy to point to the latest production build. And then to go ahead and kick off this very first one, I'll manually click deploy branch. There are some limitations with Heroku. Um, Vercel is really nice, what we saw in last week's instance, in that it's going to keep those servers online 24-7. Uh, Heroku does not quite do that. You have a more limited amount of time. So if your Heroku instance, which they refer to as Dynos, D-Y-N-O, um, if you have not had an active presence on that dyno in the last either 15 or 30 minutes, they'll suspend the application to save themselves on, you know, CPU time, save themselves a little bit of, you know, electricity money, which is fine because, you know, nobody's using it, nobody's using it. But that does mean for the next person to reuse your application, it will take about 10 to 15 seconds to spin that dyno back up. So that is just a smaller limitation of Heroku, which is fine. Um, if you do need to have something persist, they have very inexpensive offerings. Uh, you can upgrade your uh, application to be a persistent dyno. You get a lot more resources allocated than what the free tier offerings uh, give you. And it also um, keeps it online 24 seven. But here we are, it deployed that pretty quickly. We have this live at deploythispart3.herokuapp.com. And here we see my local changes now reflected on the cloud. Um, with Vercel as well, you know, we, we did have it automatically redeploying as well. So if we went to that URL, which off the top of my head, I don't remember. <laughs> um, uh, but if we looked at that, it probably would be updated by now as well. So that's the beauty about um, cloud platforms, you know, even if I have this distributed across multiple deployment platforms, they're all watching the same thing. If I update main, they're going to go ahead and spin up a new um, build of it, and they'll always be reflecting my latest production builds. So that's the great part about <laughs> cloud deployments. But it's just a very quick little TLDR of deploying a Next.js application with Heroku. Some other uh, frameworks might be a little more set up, but Next.js, as we just saw, was really, really seamless. So that's just about all I have for talking about Heroku with Next.js. But if you have any questions or you want to see the subsequent deployment platforms that we have planned, like DigitalOcean and AWS, go ahead and subscribe so you can see those videos and be notified when a new video is updated. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. See y'all later.